Was there really a change of seasons in Egypt? We ask ourselves because after the Arab Spring that put end of the to the government of Hosni Mubarak, many thought that this country had retaken their political stability. However, all of the actors against um, Mohammed Morsi and uh, the protest against Mr. Assisi, apparently there is no spring yet. What has pushed all of these protests? How have how the government uh, reacted? What does this imply for the rest of the Arab world? This is our topic for today. Let's begin. September 20th, uh, between calls saying CC out, many millions of protesters marched to demand for President Assisi to leave. Apparently, these are the, the strongest protests after arrived in 2014, a year after he pushed for the coup uh, for the current president at the time. Let's see what he says. All of you need to know that the Egyptian people are very intelligent and the false appearance that they're trying to deliver will not work. What happened before will not happen again because God is with us and that is why God, uh, Egypt, don't forget, don't Egyptians, don't be uh, be careful. We will never abandon you, but others will oppose your happiness. This is a war between two groups. Well, the news media also has to do what they have to do. This is what President Al Sisi said. Let's not forget that um, in his participation in the United Nations, he accused the Brotherhood, the Islam Brotherhood, and he says that this is problem that has created instability in the north of Africa. To put to use this as the spear of the. Let's see what he says. The Prime Minister will. We'll bring it to date. We'll go to Parliament next week to discuss with the Parliament what's going on. We will speak about the economic aspect and the hostile campaigns of the of the news media with the current with current anti-government protests. Let me open quote. We are moving in the right directions. We have been able to attain a successful economic plan and we have the strongest government in the region. But the enemies of this country tries to interrupt Egypt in many ways. Close quote. The declarations of Del A is, comes after a day uh, after the first session of Parliament accusing the government of not doing the, enough to protect people from all of the turns of the reform. Let's go to Europe Press, says Egypt is back to the subsidies of food for almost 2 million people after the protests. Let's go a bit more into depth. The Egyptian government has ensured to give back the subsidy program that includes rice and pasta to almost 2 million people from which it had been withdrew, withdrawn. And this happens two days after uh, the president, Fatah el-Sisi, had said that he that this is becoming personal. As part as my follow-up with the procedures related to the help of the people, I understand that some people have been affected with the withdrawal of the subsidy. The president said this after the protests that were held in Cairo and other country and other cities. There, the people say that there are, is too much spending on behalf of the president and the government itself. The president denies these allegations. Since February, the ministry had analyzed how uh, how to reduce the subsidies to some families that can pay for their own food. In this context, some people were eliminated from the program because they bought a car or because they were able to pay the tuition fees of the school of the children. Well, I guess there's a little bit of everything. 
Let's break this up, uh, all of these aspects. Meanwhile, I recommend the analysis of Juan Antonio Aguilar for Hispan TV. His opinion is uh, written under, we are not confronted with a similar revolution of 2012. I open quote, the government of the Egyptian president, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, has created a very difficult situation in the country because they try to, to swim between two, two waters. They, he tries to get away along well with China and Russia. And on the other hand, they want to get, away, get along well with the U.S. and Israel. This is a situation that al-Sisi cannot uphold for long, and this has caused social unrest and protests against him. Al Sisi, according to Aguilar, is is worried of to to make people forget about Hosni Mubarak, and that's why he wants to do away with the protests that destabilize the country. We are not confronted with a situation such as in 2012. Uh, why is the difference? Because Hillary Clinton no longer exists. And Barack Obama, the former president of their country, to push forward these protests. They are no longer here with the purpose of changing the regime. Al Sisi also has the, um, dominated the area, and it's not easy to push him out, just like Mubarak. And they were, he, he was accused of living in, in richness while the 60% of the government, of the people, are poor. Let's see a, a map that we have for you. This is the, the people, 35% of the population is poor, almost 5% higher than three years ago when the government started this reform program. I'm saying this because uh, you can see how the numbers numbers of poverty uh, are registered by each uh, internet by each institution according to their tendency well, Janet Cruz Pareta our corresponsal from El Cairo updates all of this information Janet greetings hi colleague uh, greeting of Cairo. In fact, the protests of September 20th have marked uh, a before and after because they are the first that are done against President Sisi after he, he took power in 2014. A former worker of the of the of the military was who led these these marches and he accuses the president of corruption and that some some of the money has been sent to to building infrastructure for the young president of course president Abel, Abdel Fattah el Sisi has denied these allegations Along with the IMF, there have been some policies that have affected the Egyptian people. According to the parliamentary debates, there are millions of people that have fallen below the poverty line after a complete silence of the government. There has been a, a big uh, a big speech in President Al Sisi while he was in the UN session, and he accused the Muslim Brotherhood to be leading this instability. After his arrival in Egypt, after participating in the General Assembly of the UN, he spoke to the to the news media. He he appeared to be sure, and he appealed to the Egyptian, asking not to be a new spring or upper spring. Several government groups have supported the posture of President al-Sisi. Several unions supported his president, and the parliament has done too. And they announced these protests and saying that over a thousand detainees have happened after all of these all of these events, and they've all been interrogated by the police. 
las confesiones de seis presuntos conspiradores extranjeros. The police has published uh, some of the declarations of six detainees where they where they confessed to having began the protests. Las nuevas manifestaciones evitaron cerraron el acceso a la Plaza Tahrir y a otros lugares claves en el país, pero por el momento la situación For the moment the situation is under control. We will continue we will follow all the events and we'll tell you all about them. Thank you very much, colleague. Let's mark the first pause. I will let you think two questions. What elements have marked the highs and lows of the policies in, in Egypt? Another question is very much related to this one. And the question is, well, you can find it on our tweet. Is the Arab Spring coming once again and they ask for the uh, for the withdrawal of President al-Sisi? Well, we're waiting for your opinions. We'll be right back. Our actions have an impact on the environment. It's our responsibility to change for the sake of our planet. Let's be part of this transition. Watch, preserve, and protect your green zone. Wednesdays, only on Telesur. Acompañamos a los pueblos que resisten en cada una de sus luchas. Somos esa ventana que se abre para visibilizarlos entre fronteras. Thursday, only on Telesur. Discover the cultural diversity that defines a continent. The place where art and tradition are part of the same nucleus. Artistic expressions. Valleys. Fridays, only on the school. What factors have marked the high and lows in the Egyptian poli politics lately? I'm, I invite you to do a, a timeline since Hosni Barbaric up till coming to Fatal al Assisi. In 2012, after the ousting of Hosni Mubarak, there was another president who was called Morsi. Uh, he was also ousted by the Minister of Defense, Abdel Fattah al-Sisi, who later legitimized his president when he was elected on 2016 and then 18. Mubarak was ousted in the spring Arab. 
and the Arab Spring. And these were protests that were pushed by the West. These protests spread through many countries during 2013. For weeks, Mubarak clung, clinged on to the, to the power, and he promised many reforms, but this was not enough to stop all the mobilizations that put an end to his government and were baptized as the Egyptian Revolution. If we see the area, some other countries were also defeated in those years. In Lebanon, the parliament ex kicked out the, the, the government Sakharini and the president of Tun Tunis and Hosni Bubarak in Egypt. These governments now ask for the, for the ousting of President ECC because he, accordingly, he lives a life of luxuries while the people are under the line of poverty. But before we go to the analysis, I, I will locate where this, where this country is. Egypt, strategic pivot in the Middle East, officially called Arab Republic of Egypt. It is a sovereign and transcontinental country. Its capital is the city of Cairo. It has a strategic location. It is a hinge that unites Africa with Asia in the Middle East and controls the vital Suez Canal. It is a key state for Eastern Mediterranean. On its northern border, the is the Mediterranean Sea to the northeast. It borders with Palestine and Israel. With the Red Sea to the southeast, to the south, it borders with Sudan and on the west with Libya. Its territory covers 450 square kilometers, mostly made up of Sahara Desert and crossed by the River Nile to the north to the south, which uh, waters the country on the only fertile land that has been. And not in vain did the Greek historian said how the Hellenist Carnassus expressed that uh, Egypt is a gift of the Nile. The territory is densely populated and concentrates the largest nation population in the African continent. The country has uh, the historical weakness of not being a naval power despite having an extensive coastal line. This makes it a vulnerable target since the maritime power would only need to control the mythical city of Alexandria to put the entire nation on checkmate. Egypt is predominantly an agricultural country. Around 40% of its labor force is for this activity. Services and industrial products such as mining, manufacturing, construction makes up at least 37.6% of the GDP. Oil is the most important product of the great source of income. The main oil and gas fields are located in the Red Sea and the Liberian Desert. As for mineral richness, Egypt has abundant phosphate, salt, limestone, and iron mines. It also produces enough energy to meet all the needs of all local consumers. The new economic policy has led to the creation of private companies for the production of automobiles, electronics, and medicine. However, despite the economic strength, 32.5% of the population lives in poverty, almost 5% more than the three years ago when the government launched a deep economic reform according to the recent report published by the official statistic agency. Egypt's main trading partners are the U.S., Germany, France, Italy, and the United Kingdom. More than 34% 34 ethnic groups live together in the North African country. The official religions are Sunni Islam, uh, Coptic Christian, fathers by others, Catholics, Jews, and Protestants. For long, Egypt has been considered a great Arab power. Its, its cultural influence is enormous, in addition to having the most powerful army amongst its neighbors, and has always played a strong influence on the Arab League. So far, Egypt has offered some stability to the Israeli flank in Sinai. It mediated negotiations between Tel Aviv and the Palestinian National Authority, while serving as a containment factor for the resistant movement Hamas. Well, this is a complete context that allows us to go in depth into this analysis. Right now, with Carlos Martinez, he's a lawyer and he works for several news outlets, too. 
Gracias a usted por estar con nosotros, Carlos. El pretexto well, de esta jugada this is the pretext we're going to tell you. And it's about the recent mobilizations. But we want to do a little bit more of context. There might be something more of this just manifestation that some say that this could be the reawakening of the Arab Spring in this country. However, I think that the Arab Spring, maybe it never finished in the contemporary Egypt. Well, what is not, what has not up to done is the poverty caused by the neoliberal measures. Is the poverty caused by the neoliberal measures that may cause? are those that the president stated after the pact with the Interac International Monetary Fund. But something that has affected the middle class is the financing to several services like gas. This was a huge blow for the popular areas. Let's not forget that this is not a rich country. And there are elimination of public subsidies. Then the protests have a symbolic uh, meaning depending on who is walking in them. And this is important because from Barcelona, some of them just create, just are worried about the conflict. And every time the exploitation, the exploitation keeps on growing. Well, it's important to see where these protests come from. For example, in Europa Press, say that the problem is, well, the reason, while the, the reason is to withdraw these subsidies, these helps, so what it means is that population is using the subsidies to, to buy cars, so, I would like you to go deeper into that or not. You tell me how the media has focused from different perspectives a reality that are the manifestations. Well, that type of, of topics that are so important for the, for the middle class there is a evidence of the pre of what's going on in that newspaper. Others have others who have abused the public subsidies. And it's, a, it's inevitable because, in fact, uh, and if not, well, if they don't receive these subsidies, either they go, they become robbers or they protest, but with no social help. The poorest, the poorest sectors of society, they cannot uh, fulfill their needs. And the name of a number of people is very high. Either Egypt recovers a certain level of economy or this uh, situation will worsen every time. Right now we can see that uh, the FMI, uh, they are supposed to help you to ask for a, for a loan. So this always uh, goes against the, the car workers. Well, after the declarations of Fatah Sisi, what do you think left, the, left his hands? Well, Egypt is has been has been riding with no route. We can say that it's, this is a decadent country and that uh, 
Russia has a different head of, of government and they have all failed. Or maybe it is a structural, a structural mistake of... Y, como habéis dicho muy bien, en, en el contexto, little, básicamente dedica a la agricultura, con lo cual una, una economía de subsistencia. Y esto hace muy complicado que un país economy. pueda mejorar económicamente este tipo de economía. Es muy difícil ver cómo un país puede crecer con este tipo de Of country. And what we have to think is that Egypt and therefore they're not willing to prepare, to prepare their, their resources and they could not, um, they could not do anything to improve their income and Egypt can only improve Proof in other type of international context that would allow them to defend their Muy bien esa fotografía que usted acaba de hacer de la región en la que se Well, thank you very much for showing the region. Sudan, oh, there you have it. It's very small though. que tienen las características que las características que acaba de ilustrar y el propio Egipto cómo venía and let's think of how Egypt was presenting themselves. Well, they may not, they were not aware of this when President of Sisi took power. Isn't that so? Well, yes, he was. But like many militaries of that region think that everything is solved with a strong hand. He says that all of the problems with the... Well, this is, doesn't work. Well, maybe with, uh, with this type of power, maybe you could pay some of the services really fast. Que se imponga desde el gobierno, de los problemas no solo se, no se van a mejorar, sino que van a empeorar. Eh, un militar que piensa con de una manera autogénica y de una manera autorial que se arreglan los problemas con represión. Pero With repression. Comprobando que la represión. But we all see that cargarla, the repression pero al final vuelve a brotar y vuelve a brotar cada vez que, por ejemplo, como se rota el precio de la gasolina. Like this happens every time that they increase the, the fuel prices. Let me ask you from the other point of view, from the, the standpoint of the Egyptian society. Were the Egyptian people aware of what could happen with Mohamed Borsi? Well, I really don't know. I think that people think that if somebody, if we change the regime, this new person could change the, the outcome of this. We cannot have a, cannot have all of these people with no work. But the economy of each country, regardless of how good you are, this model doesn't allow them to jump towards a most prosperous uh, economy. They have to change their model, and this can not only change through a progressive uh, model, but they also need other factors, like uh, the, the Arab countries, like um, Saudi Arabia, apparently, you would think that uh, after their support to Yemen, Saudi Arabia would help them out. Well, there could be a solution in that space. But by the end, there has been no brotherhood that uh, everybody assumed that there would be between Egypt and the Saudi dictatorships. Well, I would like to pose the last question. It's, it is about these relationships that Egypt have tried to maintain and that are criticized by other analysts. 
eh, y los gobernantes más recientes de Egipto well, eh, han querido estar bien con Dios y con el diablo. Some el of these presidents have, Sisi, have wanted to have good relationships with both God and the eh, devil. Mr. Assisi, for example, lado, wants good relationship with Russia and China, and on the other hand, he is very much compromised with Saudi Arabia and the U.S. So, where could there be a posture that is firm and stable? estos dos bloques si lo denominamos Or donde is there another is another relationship sí, possible hoy en día hay dos bloques el, well el there are two blocks the imperialist and the anti-imperialist and the Egypt has been trying to get support from anywhere either Saudi Arabia US or Russia China But the worst thing is the situation of, uh, of a difference with the desde los acuerdos de paz de Israel After the, the Israel peace talks, Israel, Egypt has been very soft with the Israeli government and it's due to this weakness that they try not to get any problems and they, and they point as a, as a bombardment Carlos, a million thank you for, for being with us See you soon Marcamos entonces una pausa. Let's go to our last pause. When we're back, we're going to keep on investigating on this that we've reflected with Carlos. How has Egypt been related on small cosmetics and on the macro level? Let's go right back. Enjoy the best content in spaces where you will discover new perspectives, innovation, well-being, conservation, equity, traditions, a wide variety of contents that you will find on Telesur. The news source of Latin America and the Caribbean. Discover the cultural diversity that defines the continent. The place where art and tradition are part of the same nucleus. Artistic expressions. values, passion and love. Real life. Fridays. Only on the school. From here to beyond the south. From here to the Caribbean or further north. Where can I see news connecting the whole south? From Washington. From Mexico. From Caracas. From Quito. From Havana. You can always see the news from a new vision. Connecting the global south. Only on the sur. How have the relations been between Egypt and the rest of the Arab world and their links with the West? Let's review this. 
In the last two years, Egypt has intensified the relationship with the U.S. On February 2018, high officials of both countries signed a mechanism of cooperation of defense that include the provision of weapons to this country. Another, another thing is that Egypt supported the ousting of Omar al-Bashid. They also took the same position of Saudi Arabia and United Arab Emirates in their position against Iran. White House has also continued with a good relationship with uh, Egypt. This happens when Egypt uh, announced the uh, agreement of the century with, with Israel. Apparently, um, there was going to be a new Israeli country. But this, uh, this, uh, this initiative was easily brought down. This posture of now we see that President Sisi is totally submissive to President Macron, and there's going to be an intervention to fight against the drugs lords. And it was it was also supported by the U.S. and the European Union. However, this relationship is does have some contradictions. Egypt is uh, decided against the U.S. in several international aspects. And I've wanted to reserve these minutes for analysis to go beyond the, the borders of Egypt, starting on what we said for this, I have an authority in the world, in the Arab world. She said, Frankie, well, we have these recent manifestations in Egypt, and now I'm going to ask you to geopolitically make a parallel, because what we see of, uh, as the trigger of these protests was the reform that the Al-Sisi uh, government has tried to, to apply. Well, we've always said that the U.S. politics, wherever it is applied, it always comes with a package. The package is that the countries that are against the empire oppose these policies, these policies of the International Monetary Fund, that regardless of their pretty face and they want to give solutions to the people, but they, also, they always do it on the back of the, of the most weakest ones. What they do is they apply, they give financing, but this comes along with certain requirements, obligations, that the government who receives the money must go, must go along with. One of them is to, to cut, not the, not the luxury, not the sanctuary. But uh, what they want to cut is are the expenses are for the for the gas, for bread, for wheat, for basic services. All of the public services must have some diminution. And who is going to attack, uh, who's going to attack the citizens themselves? So once again, there is an attempt against the, the middle, the middle class citizen, because every reform that we've seen, just like with Lebanon, that's the neighbor of Egypt, who's also undergoing these IMF uh, requirements. So to speak about uh, the economic measures of the IMF always implies that there's going to be suffering of the
weakest. Well, this goes this goes out without saying that this is for the workers. Uh, what we see now is we see a recession that's going on all throughout the world. And what part of the world, what social structure is being affected? The workers, right? Yeah, the workers. But we see a, a global economic world and we see that there is a, a recession. There's going to be a crisis of war, of war uh, based problems. And this has a, the internal, the internal revenue also affects the weakest part of the people. These are not only the people, but the country itself need to need to generate more jobs, more income. So we also need to relax a little bit on the on the taxes, but not on the people, but on the investor, so there can be more development, more income. But of course, we have to think of the of the worker. But the worker will not be able to 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 walk out of the of the of the tax and as a Fidel, Bo Fidel Castro said with this formula the richer become richer and the poorer become poor when we see that other countries are suffering their antagonist uh, their antagonist position and in any case when we see an example of Venezuela, this is a country that does believe in their, in their country with the countries who really look after their people do not take away the subsidies of food, for example. What we see in the streets, what happens in Argentina and Ecuador right now, as we speak, these economic measures are obligatory imposed by the IMF and this is for their, for their bank interest and we see it clearly I'm not going to say the word of uh, this is of the White House when yesterday confronted with a, with a country, there must be respect to another country, to another flag. When uh, he was totally, President Trump was totally disrespectful. This was, this was when uh, speaking with Al Sisi, and he said, where is my favorite dictator? Dictator. Everything that's going on in Egypt is part of, of this economic recession. The main mistake that uh, British's Brexit affected directly the sector of tourism in Egypt in terms of uh, learning of losing jobs de la linea de turismo y aérea Thomas Hawk and this in the, with the company Thomas Cook which affected 6 billion 
de paquete turístico. Look is for Entonces, places eh, allí se to be booked. Más de so, 20, empleo, there were eh, over 20,000 eh, that were there. Hotelera, hotelera, development in the hotel industry. We know that this internal income added to the recession and to the wars. And there are, for this, there are restrictions in the, in the Gulf. Well, there's going to be a decrease of the, of the, of the taxes that come from the Suez Canal. So, as you can see, nothing is left good from the U.S. policies. The only thing they do is they have a good income. What could be the last problem of all of this? What could be the geostrategic panorama of this, uh, of this area? And what they have to do is to not give the subsidy to some people because the, uh, the subsidy doesn't reach a dollar per day. And uh, for the same system, how could you how could you withdraw a subsidy? So El Sisi promised through a Twitter, not through a speech. He promised. A esta solicitud del pueblo de que to haya this una request of the people that there be a, uh, a withdrawal que, que que va, uh, mirar, eh, that el could revisar el paquete. They're going to check it with the same de manera brutal, tratar de uh, oprimir, oprimir a los manifestantes y más. Well, you could speak of that they have to recheck uh, the corruption that is within Egypt because there was one important element that highlights in all of the analysis about Egypt. And this is that the armed forces is very much involved and has become, has gotten money from Sisi because mm -hmm. not everybody wanted to invest in Egypt. This affected that this initial topic when this uh, began so when they asked for that the measures that the measures be reviewed he said that the, with the money that uh, that the African fund and the IMF gave him they were used not for the reforms but to continue building uh, palaces and other things the president has said that uh, I will continue with those palaces they are not for personal income but for the service of people Okay, I don't want to leave without asking a question. And CC says, uh, and what they say is that it was after Morsi, the, from the presidency, he wants to go back to the presidency. How much, how true is this? Well, let's not forget. And let's not forget that it's important to divide that want to, to want to leave the situation with a solution 
uh, dar un aire que le puede dar una give him some type of a dignified life. So you must, must come from and see what, what is left uh, of the protesters in the street. They want to take back the power. So what we can say is that some groups are taking advantage of what's going on now. And let's not forget that they have positions in the north of Africa. And this power position that is very clear against Saudi Arabia and the Persian Gulf. So it's the group that is in favor. And uh, we're speaking of Egypt that has their own interests. Well, Israel has it too. The, the cause is they wanted to create a state on the Sinai. What's going on in Yemen? The position of Al Sisi in favor. And on the other hand, uh, Otro contexto, bueno, la presencia de tanto Qatar. Let's see that the presence of Qatar. So there are many, there are many aspects that are moving around. It's not only the internal; it's also the external. So it's a chaos situation that Al Sisi, Al Sisi has. Thank you very much for helping us understand. Let's go to our conclusions. The Arab Spring has become began again in Egypt, or will some will will a better season finally come? Sisi has has gone back on his measures just to put at rest all of the discontent of the people. Apparently, this comes from the opposition. Not everything is said. Let's see how complex this scenario is. My, my partner has, well, was explaining, so we must explain with lots of detail how the, the people of, of, let's close this, this move.